Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Michelle Lewis, and I am the pastor here at Bread of Life, and I am thrilled that you have joined us for worship today. Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks, and I am the deacon here at Bread of Life. And also I'd like to welcome you to our worship today. And hello, my name is Wendy DeVore and I will be the interpreter today. Say, Dorothy, I've noticed that your background looks different. Where are you today? Oh, I am here at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church building. Oh, that's so nice. Yes, uh, the technology is finally working here. And uh, we're just testing it out today to see if this works for everyone. But we have a better connection. And I am thrilled to be here today. Yes, me too. So today's service, we have two special announcements that we are still celebrating Epiphany. And we celebrate to remember the wise men that saw a bright star. And they followed the star and that's when they found baby Jesus. And through that experience, they had a better understanding of God and how awesome he is. We also confess our mistakes and sin. We ask for God to forgive us. And I want to let you know that we continue our pulpit exchange with Bethel. And Deacon Dorothy's sermon will be shared with Bethel too. Oh, and also we wanted to let you know that Bethel will be using the gospel lesson from Bold every week during Epiphany. So they are seeking exposure to ASL and deaf worship. Now, please light a candle at home as we light a candle to begin worship today. In this season of waiting, of longing, of looking for you to come into our world, we are seeking light. In our own lives, our neighborhoods, our families, Please follow along. We are seeking light. In our work, our country, our world,
we are seeking light. Jesus promises when we seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. Ask and it will be given to you. Amen. And now the confession. We confess in the name of our God, the source of life that gave us birth and of the fountain of living water and the spirit, our light and our salvation. We live in the darkness of this world. So let us confess our sin and welcome the light of God's forgiveness. And now we invite you into this stillness and to think about our confession and the sins and mistakes that we have made. Mary accepted your call to become mother of Jesus. Forgive us. We fail to trust your desires for us. Your son was born in poverty with animals nearby. Forgive us. We neglect those who needs are great. The shepherds left their flocks and went to Bethlehem. Forgive us. We like being comfortable, so we do not take risks to trust you. The Magi followed the star to find the savior of the world. Forgive us. We do not seek you with our whole hearts. The angel said, his name shall be Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. With great joy, I announce to you the entire forgiveness of your sins. Through the name of our God, the source of life, living water for our lives, and our light and salvation.
Amen. Alleluia. Christ is born for us. Oh, come, let us adore him. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, source of life that gave us birth. Fountain of living water, our light and salvation. Amen. Prayer of the day. Jesus, you are Lord of people who are fishers. You taught your disciples to cast a wide net, not for fish, but for people. Teach us how to fish too. Make our fingers kind and flexible so we may handle hearts and hands gently. Make our minds quiet and patient while we wait for those who are not yet ready to receive you. And make our hearts hungry for your word. We pray these things in your name, Jesus. You have captured our hearts already. We are grateful. Um, and now the gospel lesson. Reading from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. As Jesus stood beside Lake Galilee, a crowd of people pushed to get closer to him and to hear his teachings of God. Jesus saw two boats at the shore of the lake. The fishermen were washing their nets. Jesus got into the boat that belonged to Simon. He asked Simon to push off a little from the shore. Then he sat down in the boat and taught the people on the shore. When Jesus finished speaking, he said to Simon, take the boat into the deep water. If all of you will put your nets into the water, you will catch some fish. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night trying to catch fish and caught nothing. But you say I should put the nets into the water? So I will. The fishermen put their nets into the water. Their nets were filled with so many fish that they began to break. They called to their friends in the other boat to come and help them. Their friends came and both boats were filled so full of fish that they were almost sinking. The fishermen were all amazed at the many fish they caught. When Simon Peter saw this, he bowed down before Jesus and said, go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were amazed too. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, your work will be to bring in people, not fish. 
The men brought their boats to the shore. They left everything and followed Jesus. Now, something very interesting to notice about Peter. He was probably a fisherman for his entire adult life. And then on this one day, Jesus spoke to him and said, follow me. Now, if I was in his shoes, I would say, oh, now wait a minute. I would have a lot of questions for him. I would say, where are we going? How will we eat? What should I bring with me? I would be full of questions before I headed off with him. But Peter did not do this. He dropped everything and followed him immediately. Peter did not wait until he had everything figured out before he left and followed Jesus. And so today, what I'd like to do is focus on this theme. Do we need to figure things out or will we put our trust in God? Now let's pause for a moment. So if we want to go to the store and buy a new piece of clothing, usually we take this piece of clothing into the fitting room. Now, if there was one fitting room that had only one mirror inside of it, and the second fitting room had six mirrors along the side of the walls in there, which room would you prefer to use? Probably the one with the six mirrors. And the reason for this is that these six mirrors will provide different perspectives and show how you would look from different angles. If you only had one mirror to look into, it would be difficult to get an idea of the different perspectives of how you would look in that piece of clothing. So I would like to use that analogy for our lesson today. So what is the point of having six mirrors? So what I'd like to do is share a short story for each of these mirrors. And then we need to decide, is this something we need to figure out or would we move forward in trust? Now, for myself, if I become uh, curious about something or if I want to know the answer to a question, the first thing that I do is I go to my laptop and I go to Google and I put my question into Google search engine until I find my answer. And usually I'm pretty satisfied with this. It saves my time and I just love Google because I got my answer immediately. Now, however, a couple of weeks ago when the riots took place at the Capitol, I was shocked and amazed and surprised about what happened. And I didn't know where to go for those answers. And so the only thing that I could do was to look up to God and trust that this was in God's hands. And so for the second mirror, during World War II, people in England were worried about the bombs that would be dropped on them. 
And so the English people put up lots of billboards and signs. And one of them said to be calm and pray. To try to keep everyone to remain calm and to remember to pray. And in order to remain calm, you do not need to have everything figured out, but you can stay calm through prayer. The third mirror when I had heard about what had happened at the, the Capitol in DC, as I'm sure everyone else was filled with worry and fear. It also gave me a perspective on what people through the black community, what they have been experiencing all along, this fear and terror and worry and anxiety that they have been experiencing for the last 200 years. Can you imagine feeling that way for 200 years. And so what do we do now? We don't need to figure this all out for everyone. So what do we do for, to, pro, to move justice along? to listen to others and to support others and to be there for them. Do not seek for perfection. But seek unity. We need to seek unity and support one another. And now the fourth mirror. Now this could be uh, if you need to get insurance for your house or for your automobile, you usually sit down with an insurance agent and you negotiate the different terms of the insurance. And then once you have all the terms figured out and agreed upon, you sign all the appropriate documents. Now, of course, there are times where you need to know the details of what you are agreeing to before you agree to it. However, with God, we do not always need to have everything figured out. There are times where we just need to trust God first before we know all the details. And now for the fifth mirror, Psalms 23 says, you lead me along the right paths. And what I would like to do is now sign this in ASL. That verse reminds us that we do not need to have everything figured out before we continue to walk on a path. I remember one time I was watching a video of a shepherd who had about 23 sheep and they were following the shepherd into a city and there were lots of cars on the road. So the shepherd had stopped along on the curbside 
and the sheep just stayed put. And then the shepherd called for them to cross the road, and then they followed just as he commanded them to. They put their trust in this shepherd. It was amazing. And now for the sixth mirror. You know, sometimes we wish that God would just give us a blueprint of our life so that we could have everything figured out and know what's next. But honestly, I would rather not get this blueprint. Because if I was given a blueprint, I would become so engrossed in the details and become nervous and worried about how this was going to happen. Sometimes it's just easier to put your trust in God and have faith that God will lead you down the right path. There was a psychologist from Florida who was doing research on how stress affects the brain. And this psychologist said, that 85% of the things that we are worried about never happen. Can you imagine 85%? This reminds us to cast all of our burdens and worries on God. And what does God give us in return? His peace, love, and joy. So I hope that by sharing these different six perspectives, provide some peace and calm. And Proverbs says, do not figure everything out on your own, but to trust God with your whole heart. And thanks be to God that he does not leave us on our own to figure all of this out on our own. Lord, help us to keep our focus on you and to trust you completely. Amen. And now we invite for you to share your prayer request, um, situations that you are worrying or troubling you, or people that you would like to pray for. So please type your prayer requests into the YouTube chat box.
and then your prayers will be shown during our time of worship. Lord Jesus, light of the world, accept our prayers. Use us to reflect your light so that the places of darkness in our world would be to have your light. Then all nations will be drawn to you and be overwhelmed with joy. Amen. At the birth of Christ, the angels sang a song of peace and good news for all. Peace from our Lord with you always and also with you. So please share peace from God with others. And that could be through a text or email or through video chat. Maybe you write a card and send that off. So please take the time to share peace with one another. Dorothy, peace with you. And peace with you both. And Wendy, peace with you. And peace be with you. At this time, we invite you to prepare your offerings to send to Bread of Life. We take this time to acknowledge that often God shows up for us in unexpected ways or in surprising places. This message that God loves you and me can sometimes come to us from strangers or unexpected people. God asks us and God trusts us to give witness to this good news that God loves us and God specifically asks us here at Bread of Life to share this good news with the deaf community and all of their families, friends, their loved ones. And as we do every week, we invite you to join us in this calling. How can you help us accomplish this mission? It's not something that just I do or not something that just Dorothy does or our interpreters. It is something that we do together. So we invite you to wonder how can you help accomplish this mission? What are your ideas for how we can connect more deeply with the deaf community? And as we do every week, we ask for your financial help to continue this work. We need your ideas. We need your time and your energy. And we also need your money. It isn't free to do this work. And when we give money as people, part of our heart goes along with it. And then our heart is connected to those places where our money goes. So Bread of Life needs some money to do what we're doing. And when you and I as individuals give some of our money away, 
we give part of our heart with it. So we ask that at this time, you would write a check to Bread of Life, or you can use PayPal to make a donation to the work that we're doing here at Bread of Life. And now for the offering prayer. Lord, let us pray. Good teacher, in your life, you show us how to live, to live with compassion, peace, and generosity. Bless our gifts with your love so we can use it for your purpose in our world. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer in ASL. Please follow along. God gathers us together and God sends us from this place. As you go, receive this blessing. God of glory lives in you. Names you beloved. Shines brightly on your path. Amen. Go in peace. Love and serve the Lord. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>